Well, welcome back. My name is David Carr, your host for the Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast, where we get to know ourselves better so that we can lead ourselves, lead our, lead our teams, uh, lead our families. Um, and so I'm grateful for you to be coming back here on our next episode. And I want to jump right in there. Um, the last episode, we talked about stress and burnout, and and uh, we've talked about investing in ourselves in previous episodes. What I want to talk about today, though, is uh, related, but not quite the same. It's really about, as a leader, are we being a help or more of a hindrance to those around us? And um, I want you to really kind of let that sink in here. Um Oftentimes, we believe we're helping as a leader. We believe very strongly in our opinions, our uh, abilities, uh, because they have gotten to a, to a certain place, um, rightfully so. However, I want you to consider this, that your help or perceived help <laughs> might actually be more of a hindrance than you realize. And this comes about knowing yourself and knowing your team and those around you. Uh, this comes to even your wife and your children. Um, and so I really want you to think about this today as we're, we're talking about help or hindrance. This is the theme of the podcast today, this episode. And what I want you to think about here is oftentimes we even have good intentions or what we think is positive and encouraging. And in, in essence, it's actually more of a hindrance because number one, we don't understand how we show up with others. Um, and when we do this, there's a lot of negative things that can come out of this. I've done this um, in the past, and it's something that I've been very conscious about, uh, about how do I show up? Am I really adding value and helping, or am, am I making things more complicated and, and worse? <laughs> um, adding fuel to the fire, so to speak, right? Um, so this can come in in many different ways, um, but oftentimes when we have experience and we've seen that things have worked in a specific circumstance, um, that may or may not translate into the work you're doing today. I've seen this in many times in, over the course of my career, um, working as a biologist, uh, working in technical work, uh, where I did something in a particular program. In this case, I was working for a utility company in a particular program and working with different people. And we did things a certain way because that's the way we understood it in that particular program. However, later on, we had a new program, a new contract. It, although it was the same client, uh, there was different players in there. Uh, there was different initiatives and goals that we're supposed to be achieving. And although the players, some of them were the same, but others were different. So that made a dynamic. And the work that we were doing is also a bit different, similar to client, similar ultimate client, but different nuanced work. Well. We can take some things from hi the history and, and what we understood and, and did, but we have to reset our expectations and understandings. And so when we just charge ahead without considering that, oftentimes we actually become more of a hindrance than we actually help others. And here's 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 some fruit of that. So how do you know if perhaps you might be, be more of a hindrance than a help? Oftentimes, You'll see people shut down. They'll have low morale. Uh, people, family members, um, their productivity and motivation decreases. If you're seeing those things, if you're seeing <laughs> that fruit, there might be an issue with number either you or others leading the team in being more of a hindrance than a help. When you do this over time, what happens is you erode trust and respect. And so then I've I've been there and I've been around other leaders that kind of ramrod things through and they believe that's the best thing. And honestly, I believe that they do at times. I don't think that they're causing harm. They don't want to cause harm, but they and they believe earnestly um, that this is true. Oftentimes I find this in entrepreneurs, um, those that are um, kind of ahead of the pack, strategically thinking, I call it pioneer, a pioneer voice. Uh, in the five voices language, but they're the loudest voice and they kind of overpower others. And so what happens is that can erode trust and respect. And then it makes you have actually, by doing that, it affects your ability to lead effectively. And so when we're hindering others too, you'll see comp 
communication gets compromised. There's misunderstandings. Uh, there is uh, a misalignment in um, goals and expectations. Uh, and then, of course, that just builds, right? Now we're building. It's like a dam, water flowing here, coming in behind as these things come up. Now we're building and having conflict and tension. And so you may not even realize this, some of the things you double down on, uh, on a particular way of doing things or sharing things, it actually makes it worse, um, exacerbates the problem. Um, so, you know, for example... I am a connector. I, I love connecting to people. That's my, my main voice. My wife, on the other hand, is a guardian voice, more focused, risk averse. And so if I'm pressing risk, if I'm pushing things and not evaluating those things, it, it, well, I think it's helping. It actually erodes depending on the person who I'm working with. In this case, my wife, my, my team, the, the person that I love and want to be the best with, I oftentimes can undermine that if you're not being intentional. Now I've learned that over years and thankfully we're in a much better place, but for a long time, I didn't understand that. And I realized what I do at home affects me at work and vice versa. So when we keep doing these things, you're going to see inefficiencies and causing delays and resistance to productivity. Uh, and, and, and even the worst case scenarios, you actually start to see it externally. Um, and you start to see the organizational public image potentially or stakeholders or customers looking at this and like, what is going on with this leader? I, I thought that they were, you know, helping, but they're really actually becoming more of a hindrance and a block. And so think about that in your life or those that you've been around where you're like, man, if they got out of the way or if they would just listen, they would understand we could actually make so much more progress. And here's the, here's the thing. If you're that leader, what happens is, internally we we start to do these things and we're, we're seeing lack of productivity lack of engagement in our team lack of people leading into us are actually leaning away they're pulling away so that leads us to have self-doubt insecurity uh you you and then you now you're now you're second guessing yourself because you're like oh man i'm now becoming indecisive and i can't make the moves i need to make because i'm i'm been quote unquote, helping while I'm actually being a hindrance. And we talked about this in the last episode. This leads to stress and burnout because we're not meeting expectations. We have this continuous stress now. Now I feel like I'm held hostage by employees because they're not doing what I thought they should be doing and the way they should be doing it. And so I'm going to go and help them. I'm going to fix the situation. In reality, we're actually making it worse because we just kind of keep doubling down and doing what we think is best instead of like un unlearning what has not not one working let's figure out and there come could be a nuance it could be a slight a slight pivot here it doesn't have to be a a, a 180 uh, i want you to think about that but if you're not aware of this this is huge this is why i created this podcast it's to become aware you have to understand what are your triggers what are your tendencies can you understand recognize them because that's the first part of the battle um is we got to be able to understand and get awareness. If we cannot do that, we're not going to be able to adapt. We're going to be resistant to change. Um, and new situations are going to come in. New people are going to come into our life. And we're not going to be leading effectively. In fact, our hinder we're hindered. We continue to hinder ourselves. We're not helping. We're hindering ourselves by staying in this way. So when you think about Oh, am I helping or hindering? I want you to think about these things because it's super powerful when you understand you you know these triggers. Number one, it starts with yourself, and then you actually start to know others. But you have to know yourself first, um, and you have to be able to recognize these things. And like I said, I've been married eighteen years for a good portion, probably you know many many years, at least ten years. We would go in these cycles, and I, I could not get out of it. Um, it was just like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. And because we would be triggered, we'd have a tendency and we could just like, it's just like going down here. We're going down in the pit again. Um, and so I don't want you to fall into that trap. I don't want you to, I want you to be able to break that cycle with the, your coworkers, your colleagues, your wife, even your children. 
and this doesn't matter what age you're at. It's it's a lifetime cycle that we're going through here. Ultimately, if we don't get a handle on this, um, we're we're going to challenge be challenged with how we meet the values and the needs of others. It's actually creating this disconnect. And I call it morally wrong because we're off base. Oftentimes, we, what, if we say we're right and we kind of condemn the other person or we, we, we force their hand, we actually ultimately lose. I lose, they lose. It's not a, it's not a win-win when we, when we force it. And so there's a mismatch in, in the way we're understanding our, our role. And this completely undermines ultimately our legacy. Where we're where we're leading, where we're where we're leaving behind in our business and our family, and that to me is huge. Um, to leave a relationship, to lead leave people feeling manipulated, feeling um, unloved, um, causing more hurt than healing. Even though in your mind, logically, you're like, "Well, this is the right thing." Um, this is the way you do it. It's this, this, and this. And, and it, it's just like, is it wrong in and of itself? But when you have to look how you're applying it to the people, the environment, the situation you're in, you may, it may be okay in a certain circumstance, but in other circumstances, it's not, a, it's not appropriate. And I want you to consider this problem of uh, being clear. Are you being a hindrance? Are you being a hindrance or are you truly bringing help? Because if you're truly bringing help, you're going to know people are going to say, thank you. I feel relieved. I understand. Um, you're, you're opening my eyes. Um, when people are truly in need of help, and you can use the example of a firefighter or a policeman. They're coming to the rescue. They're coming and helping them. They're truly getting them out of harm's way. And they're getting them in a safe place. They're taking care of them. The people are genuinely appreciative and understanding. And if you truly are getting that feedback, that's a great indicator that you're in the right zone. That you're truly recognizing. And you're not doing it even for that kudos, that's truly where I think you're helping. You're doing it from a place of gratitude, of giving, of loving, of shepherding, of looking after this person because you know it's in their best interest. Ultimately, it's not about your self-interest. At this point, you're shifting that. But oftentimes we get kudos <laughs> we feel our, our ego building up because oh man look what i did look how look what i did look how i helped this person look what i came up with this great idea um and i want you to consider it's not so much about me or i it's really about the other person and how are they succeeding how are they advancing um are they advancing are they growing or they if you you look at them you know you can't save anybody. Okay, I want to be clear about that. We can't save anybody, but we can certainly be a catalyst to helping them along their journey. You know, we don't want to be a speed bump of life. <laughs> we don't want to be in that regard. In that regard, in this specific instance, where they need to move and they need to move quickly and get to the place where they need to go, and we're we're being a speed bump. We're being a hindrance, and we're causing stress. We're causing frustration. Think about that as a leader. Let's move to a place where we know our clear role and, and identity. Because if we're not clear on that, we will do things that are harmful and not beneficial. And the more that we're triggered and the more that we're unaware, our tendencies will tend to cut and can cut very deeply uh, to the point where, like I said earlier, trust is eroded. The relationship is damaged. And ultimately, we all know leadership, business, it's all about people. It's all about you know, who you love, who you love working with, who you understand, who do you appreciate. And if we mess up on that, it doesn't take much. I heard a story recently, um, a, a colleague that I went to uh, Cal Poly with, and he was sharing this story where he had a great big account, um, in a, a very big 
uh, fast food chain and he'd been with them. They were doing really well in marketing. And in one meeting, he got upset and he, he came across very much as a hindrance in the way I, I, I remember the story and they were very polite. They said, you know, the, 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 the client of this, this gentleman and they hang up after this meeting and they, they left his account. And they said, thank you very much for your time. We're, we're done and we're moving on. That's how quickly things can erode with clients in particular and employees. If you have really good employees and they feel cut to the bone and they feel like you're blocking them and being a hindrance, they'll leave, especially the younger generation. That's what I see more than ever in, in the in the clients that I'm helping. Um, that if you're not clear on this and you continue to feel like you're, you're actually being a hindrance, you're not going to be attracting top talent. You're not going to keep people in your organization. And so we do not want that as intelligent human leaders. We want to be aware. We want to make the pivot. Uh, we want to address these things. And this involves serious self-reflection. It involves serious feedback, willingness to change what is working, not working, excuse me, to what is working. You know, possibly getting help here with coaching or, or counseling, depending on what the circumstances is, even as consulting. Um, it's important that you be open to learning um, and recognize the impact of your actions in the, in the emotions that it causes. If we cannot identify how we show up and how others perceive us, we are in trouble. We need to be able to get that feedback from others and be able to hear that from others. Um, are we being truly supportive and helping them? Are we dominating them? There's some great tools that I have in helping leaders in this, in, in, a, in a dialogue and a deep dive we go through uh, in, in our leadership intensive um, that I run. But we want to make sure, I can't solve all these problems here on the podcast, but I want to give you some ideas, some things to think about. Um, if you can go through and do some deep self-reflection, if you can get some candid feedback Oftentimes that's hard to do, to be honest with you, a leader in a company, a uh, business owner, because employees self-limit themselves, not, not because that's just natural, not because you said that anything could be for different reasons. They'll just hold, hold that back. That's why I often come into companies as a third party. I can kind of come in as a doctor, start asking some questions and probing a little bit and to find out what's really, what's really hurting, what's really going on here. So while we can't solve that all right here in the podcast, you can work on being self-aware, seeking feedback, um, being open and willing to change at least and identify that, hey, maybe my, my way is not the best way. And let me get feedback from others critical of what I'm pre presenting or my thoughts. And even if even before you um, share your thoughts and ideas, here's an idea. <laughs> ask for others. Ask for their input. Get their perspective on 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 the situation, the problem that you see. Um, now you may or may not agree with it, but at least having a dialogue is going to help being open to others. Instead of being a hindrance, you're actually starting to open the dialogue, get people to come into the conversation and you're able to actually make moves potentially with your team. Um, and, and so remember this as a, as a, as a leader that you truly can be an amazing help and a liberator, but oftentimes when we're unaware, we will fall into old patterns and when stresses rise, rise up, and we talked about stress and burnout last episode, that you may end up being more of a hindrance and your, your team morale and your productivity, your profitability, your bottom line diminishes because you're not in that place. And so, um, my why, why I created this podcast, why I started Steward Your Business is to bring people together to accomplish great things. And it's removing the roadblocks. It's removing the speed bumps because we want people to move, move quickly, make smart decisions, collaborate, be interdependent upon one another. And um, we don't want to be a roadblock. And as a business owner, the sooner that you can get out of the hindrance mode and out of the mix of things, quite honestly, uh, and you have a, a team, a liberated team, a team that's helping, mentoring one another, being mentored by you, but also mentoring the, the, their direct reports and so on and so forth, you're going to see a thriving company. 
you're going to see a thriving family because this applies to families just as well as it does a company, honestly. If you can take what we we talked about this in the very first episode regarding marriage and how we show up and are we are we loving our wives in an understanding way? Are we helping them? Are we listening to them and then applying that in our lives to our families, to our businesses? It will make all the difference. So I want to encourage you today. Thank you for listening here. I want you to move from hindrance to help, <laughs> to hero, that you're actually being that hero that others truly need and are appreciative of that. Um, that's a gift, a beautiful thing when you can get there. Um, and we're not going to get there every day, but we're going to move to that as an intelligent human leader. You can move to that. You can become that man or woman and truly be the hero that's helping when help is truly needed and move it out of the way and not being that hindrance. So thank you for listening today on this Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast. I'm glad to have you back. We're going to be talking about other great related topics here um, to help you show up, become the most powerful man or woman in the room, leading your teams, leading your family, leading your community. Um, I wish you very well. Keep shining brightly. Come on back. We'll be sharing lots more in future episodes of the Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast. This is David Carr saying love and light. Have an amazing day. We'll talk to you soon.